uh, well, I guess what we're trying to highlight is how complicated this issue is. Mr. Gale, do you think you've ever been racially profiled? Probably. Yeah, I, you know, I, I can't say I understand because I don't. Uh, never been in that situation, but the fact that you're a law enforcement officer and you probably sometime in your life have been viewed with suspicion by police makes your testimony pretty persuasive to me in the sense that you're now sitting in the role of a law enforcement official trying to protect the community. And the, the Zimmerman case is a private individual, not a law enforcement organization. And I just really, I, I think I understand the problem. I just don't know where the line between good law enforcement and racial profiling ends and begins. Because let me tell you one thing about Congress. We'll be the first one to jump on you when you're wrong. When you get a phone call that somebody looks suspicious in a neighborhood, and you ask a bunch of questions, well, that doesn't seem to justify us going in, and that person winds up killing somebody, or robbing or raping somebody, we'll be the first ones to blame you. So you're in an untenable situation. And when it comes to the war on terror, Mr. Clegg, I couldn't agree with you more. The reality of the fact is that I wish we had done more with Major Hassan, not less. There are some websites out there that I'm glad we're monitoring. There are some groups uh, within America that are saying some pretty radical things, and I hope we follow uh, the leaders of these groups to find out what they're, what they're up to, because homegrown terrorism is on the rise. How do you fight it without fighting a religion? How do you fight homegrown terrorism without fighting people who are very loyal to America who, ap who, ap you know, who, ap who belong to a particular faith? Uh, I don't know, but I know this, that if, if the law enforcement community in this country fails to find out about the major assigns, we're the first one to be on your case. Why didn't you follow this website? He said these things in these meetings, and why didn't the supervisor tell the wing commander, you got somebody who is really out of sorts here? And as an Air Force officer, when do you go to your wing commander and say, this person said something that makes me feel uncomfortable, and you do so at your own peril? So I just don't know what the answer is. I know what the problem is. And uh, I think in the last decade, we've made some progress, Chief Davis. And maybe having legislation that makes us focus on this problem more might make some sense, quite frankly. Maybe we'll look at redefining it, but just collecting information to show exactly what happens day in and day out in America so we can act logically on it. But I know you want to say something, Mr. Clegg, but when it comes to fighting the war on terror, the fact of the matter is that Great Britain and France are going through this very similar situation right now where they have groups within the country that are espousing some pretty radical ideas, and they just expelled someone, I think, from uh, Great Britain just, just today or yesterday, an uh, imam who was saying some pretty radical things. So I don't know when national security starts and individual liberties begin. That's for sure thought. Well, I want to endorse what some of my co-panelists have said, that um, it's very important in the war on terror that we have the cooperation of the overwhelming majority of uh, individual Americans, Arab Americans, and, and Muslim Americans. Don't you think uh, who, one of the great strengths of our country is that even though homegrown terrorism is on the rise, generally speaking, American Muslims have assimilated in our society and our culture, thousands serve in the military, and that we're actually the example to the world of how you assimilate. No, that's right. And I think that, you know, stereotyping is very dangerous in this area. Um, you know, most Arab Americans are, are not Muslims, for instance. I believe they're Christian. Uh, you know, you can't just look at somebody's name and conclude uh, things about them. So, and, I, and as, a, uh, as the, my co-panelist said, it's very important to have the, the cooperation and the trust of Arab American communities. So I don't want to give the impression that I think that it should be, you know, open season. Uh, on, on, on anyone on account of their 
um, uh, ethnicity or or their religion. I'm simply saying that there are that, that there are going to be circumstances. Well, what where we should be looking for is actions by individuals within groups, statements made that that send signals that this is this is not where you know practicing religion should be taking one. It's the activity on the internet. Well, as Professor Harris has said, it's, it's what you're you know, talking we're, about. We're That's what I want us to, and how we do that. I think is very complicated because when you monitor these websites, maybe you capture some innocent conversation. So that having judicial oversight, I think, is important. But uh, I guess that's what I'm looking for: is sort of objective uh, indicators of you know this is getting out of bounds here. Senator Graham, Senator Graham, Graham you're absolutely right. Uh, it is about behavior. That's the key to everything. And making statements, whether uh, out loud or on the internet, that's action. That's behavior. And here's the problem we have. If you're an Air Force member and you have an uh, American Muslim in the group and they say something that's, that alarms you, you have to think, well, if I say something, am I going to get myself in trouble? But, Senator, if, if I may interject, yeah. it's nice to see you again, Senator. Thank you for uh, yeah. yielding to me. I think part of the challenge we have in a, in a country that's dedicated to free speech is how you draw that line well in a way that doesn't quell speech we want to protect. I know that perhaps my organization and you have different points of view on abortion, for instance. And yet I think you and I would completely coincide from the moments I've shared with you. I know you and I would completely coincide that anyone who dares to blow up an abortion clinic is a criminal. And that's not speech. <laughs> and yet then would you feel comfortable surveilling the anti-abortion websites for individuals who perhaps would be willing to blow up an abortion clinic just because they may share the points of view of the radicals who would blow up a clinic I, don't, I know you would not feel comfortable yeah, if I could put I, words I, in your mouth. I know exactly what you're saying. Uh, and, and so the context is not that different in the context of speech that perhaps we find odious, perhaps we find difficult, but that is what America is about. Um, democracy is a great many things, but it should never be quiet. But, and if but, we all agree, then it's not the America we know and love, sir. I, I guess here's maybe where legislation can happen, and my time is up. There's, you know, having thoughts against the government or expressing yourself in an aggressive way. You can be radically pro-choice, radically uh, against abortion. You can feel the way you would like to feel. You can speak your mind, but there comes a point in time when the rest of us have to defend ourselves and our way of life. And uh, what I hope we'll do in this discussion is not ignore the threats that do exist. There is a lurking, looming threat against this country and against our way of life. And uh, I hope we will not get so sensitive to, the, to this dilemma that we will basically unilaterally disarm ourselves. And when it comes to basically, you know, the immigration issue, if there was ever a reason to fix our immigration system, this hearing highlights it. You've got millions of people here who are undocumented, illegal, and I would just be greatly offended if I were a corporal coming back from Afghanistan who happened to have an Hispanic last name and got stopped because somebody thinks I'm here illegally. I could be greatly offended, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, there's a uh, downside of illegal immigration in terms of crime and I just the way to solve that problem is clear to me is comprehensive immigration reform thank you all this has been a very good hearing and uh, we'll, we'll see if we can work with Senator Cardin to find something maybe more bipartisan mr. chairman can I answer